Hi from Claire's Cat. Today we're doing Grade 10 Cat Module 2.5 Safe Internet Use. We know that the internet is a very dangerous place. You get viruses, worms, trojans, spam, hoaxes, phishing, farming and spoofing. And we're going to talk about all of these aspects and then how to protect your computer against these. So with a virus, it disrupts the normal functioning of your computer. Your computer starts doing strange things. It would be loaded without your knowledge or consent. It is designed to create and exploit security loopholes. So if there are ways that Windows hadn't quite thought that a, a spammer or a, a virus designer could, could do, it goes and finds those ways and then exploits them. And it tries to reproduce and spread to other computers. It does, cannot attack the hardware of your computer, but the software that manages and controls the hardware is attacked. How does a virus spread? How do you get a virus onto your computer? It's either an infected email attachment, something you download from the internet, files shared on a network, or files on portable media. And most viruses activate when you run or open the activated file. How do you know if you have a virus on your computer? Files suddenly start disappearing. Your computer slows down a lot. Programs stop working properly. Free space on your computer suddenly gets reduced hugely. Error messages not seen before start appearing. Your computer no longer boots up. Antivirus software reports the presence or the threat of a virus. So we're in Corona times and we want to know how to avoid viruses. So if you have antivirus software, and remember that Windows 10 comes with um, a Defender program that has an antivirus in it. It should be configured to warn you of the presence of your virus, automatically delete any virus it detects, and then quarantine a virus. We've heard all about quarantine these days. To quarantine a virus means it gets set aside into a safe place in your computer where it can't do any harm. And then once, if you know that it's fine, then you can retake it out of quarantine, just like quarantine in Corona times. More about virus prevention. Install an antivirus or use the one in Windows. Keep the antivirus software and definitions up to date, although this is mostly done automatically. And um, scan files that are used that are stored on portable media. If people plug in a flash drive into your computer, make sure it gets scanned. And then scan email attachments and downloaded files before opening them. You can set your antivirus software to scan incoming and outgoing email as well. And make sure you avoid pirated software. Malware is often packaged with that type of software. Do not run programs that you get from untrusted sources. Disable the auto run feature for your flash drives. So that when a, a flash drive is plugged in, you switch the autoplay off so that you first are able to check the flash drive before just opening the data on it. Computer worms. This is malware that is able to distribute itself over a network, normally via email, without a person running an infected program. So it sort of just infiltrates itself onto your computer. It can reproduce itself many times. So it could, your computer could send out hundreds of worms with devastating effects. 
sends emails out to other computers, which also get the worm. And then the worms take up all of the hard drive space. It can cause your computer to run very slowly and even crash. And remember to avoid it, install an antivirus, and keep it updated. Trojan. This is a destructive program, but it's disguised as something useful. It seems to be legitimate software, but when you run it, the disaster happens. It deletes files on your computer, or it scans your computer for personal information and it sends it to the person who created the Trojan. So any .exe file, beware, they may contain a Trojan. Do not open attachments or run any programs unless you are quite sure it is safe to do so. Spam. Email advertisements sent out to you <clears throat> that you did not request, and it's called junk mail. So to prevent spam, be careful who you give your email address to. Check if your internet service provider can help. Many ISPs fil filter out spam and investigate the capabilities of your email program. Some antivirus programs also include anti-spam software and there's special anti-spam software like MailWasher. The most important, do not respond to spam. It just confirms that the email address is valid and they may spam you even more. Hoaxes and scams. An internet hoax is an email message or article intended to deceive or defraud others. So how do you protect yourself? Never accept information at face value. Always check the source of information. And often it's just a rumor. It's not based on fact. Just delete it and warn the sender about the hoax. A hoax is some, something often in your WhatsApp, people pass on a very interesting article and you find out it's a hoax. Or even on email, you may also get hoaxes. And be aware of virus hoaxes that encourage you to delete important files from your computer. Always check the information before you just run, out, run along and do it. Many websites investigate hoaxes and publish these results. So go and look on these sites to check the validity of the messages. Phishing. This is when somebody is conning a user to give out personal and confidential details. They may ask for your PIN number or your password. And the phisher, that's the person right doing the phishing, they pose like they are a legitimate organization, like a bank, and they usually send you an email and ask you for your PIN number or your password. So this is what a fissure looks like. To prevent phishing, do not respond to email requests to confirm details like your bank account number or your PIN or your password. Type in the URL of a bank website directly. Don't just click on a link in an email to go to these sites. And check that the site you're using is secure. It should say HTTPS, not just HTTP. So the this URL at the bottom here looks secure because it's got the S in. Farming. This is when you go to a website, so you've typed in a URL, but you are taken through to a different website that you didn't want to go to, but it looks like the one you wanted, but it's a fake website. And it happens even if you type in the correct URL for the official website. 
The criminal then uses the data you enter, maybe a password or a PIN, and they can get into your bank account this way. So to avoid farming, ensure you have up-to-date anti-spyware software installed. And many sites requiring secure information will warn you if you're redirected to another site, i.e. somebody is trying to farm you. And listen to those warnings. Ensure that the site you are ac accessing is secure. Remember that spyware, are, it's a type of program that has bad intentions, so it's malware, and it tries to monitor and record how you use your computer it's spying on you, and then it sends whatever you are typing on your keyboard back to a third party who can use that information, maybe to get into your bank account or something similar. Email spoofing. This is the, when the email header is changed. That's the addressing part of the email. So that the email appears to come from a different source. You think it comes from your bank or from someone you trust. And it's used when they write you spam or phishing emails. And it's used to disguise the origin of the email and make the email seem more believable. So here are a whole lot of guidelines. Keep your operating system up to date. Keep your antivirus software definitions up to date. Be careful when installing software from the internet. Do not click on links in pop-ups. Be careful when opening attachments or programs, especially internet downloads. Have good password policies. Stay informed and keep abreast of news and tips. And don't be gullible. Here are some good password policies. Don't use personal information and use at least eight characters. You need to use letters, numbers, and special symbols in every password. Use different passwords in different accounts. Change your passwords from time to time. Don't write your passwords down and especially don't give your passwords out to your friends. Here are some best practices for interacting with others online. Do not give out personal details online. Do not make arrangements to meet in person with someone you met online. It can be dangerous because you don't know that that person is really who they say they are. If someone makes you feel uncomfortable, discontinue the conversation and inform an adult. Remember, no posting on a social networking site can be regarded as private. Emma Sadlia always says, if you wouldn't post it on a billboard by the side of the highway, then don't post it on a social networking site. It is acceptable to ignore friend requests from strangers. Be suspicious of someone who just seems too perfect. It's probably a whole fake um, persona that they are showing online. And consider turning off the geotagging function on your mobile device or even your normal device, your computer, to keep your location secret. And here is a page that you can revise all of the terms that we have spoken about in this slideshow.